You're back to recording. Uh, it's recording now, yes, sir. Okay, we'll just we'll just cover the record briefly. We've paid, yes, found out that the recording of the meeting is not occurring. Uh, we are not broadcasting, but we are recording. So we do this when we are at the configuration of the phase. I guess we began to start talking about phase two, the future parking, and then the police personnel. Um, we were there, how many vehicles? And we were, I think we were at last to widening of Fisk. Okay. So, as I said, we we're going to widen Fisk from the police station down to the corner of Maple, along with the construction of a sidewalk from the police station to the corner. Um, and that kind of link, link, links that down, links that, links that to the corner. Um, and I was about to turn to the next page, which is 105 in the set that was provided to you. Sheet 105 is our utility and grading plan. Um, so from a stormwater perspective, we are not creating more than a quarter of an acre of new impervious, nor are we creating this little more than an acre of land. So from a stormwater perspective, we are all minor stormwater projects. Um, that said, we are still managed, we still need to manage our stormwater. Stormwater comes down off of the fields and flows in and around the site. So we are picking it up and diverting it and collecting it. So it flows northeast off the site. It flows from south to north. Yeah. South to north. Comes off the fields. It goes off to the, the right hand side of us. It goes off to the it goes off on the north side of the, the, the bulk of it goes off to the north side, although some of it a good chunk of it also goes off on the set on the west side of the site. There's a collection system that goes down the west side, and there's drainage that runs along the side of the um, existing wall 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 and then kind of out into the church property. So the primary the primary drainage pads are going to be with main. We have drainage that's picking up the water that's coming off the tennis court, getting pipes around the community center, the new community center, and piped through the parking lot down to the existing drainage system in Fisk. We also have a drainage system. We're going to build a new drainage system in the footprint of the old police station. We have to demo that building. We're going to line up with a big hole in the ground. You've got to fill it with something. You might as well use it for stormwater. So we're using it for stormwater. We're going to put some perforated pipe in there and use that as our detention system. Um, that'll be built in phase with construction of the police station. So we'll stub it in and work with that. We are also proposing, you'll notice, a depression graded in the jog of the walking path on the west side of the building. That's going to be a small bioretention basin. We take leaders from the west side of the building for some into a bioretention basin. Again, while well, not required, it is a nice feature, a nice way to do stormwater management, um, nice entry to the park. We think that looks well here. Other utilities, obviously, a connection for the sanitary sewer runs down again. One of the things you'll notice is everything's all scrunched together between the existing and the proposed police station. And that's so that we can build the sewers, the water, the sewer, the water, the electrical, and the stormwater connections all in phase one before we build the parking lot. Then we demo the police station. We kind of have to squish stuff over in the room. A little bit of a challenge, um, but works pretty well. Looking to our next sheet, I have I took the order on the drawings. So we looked at lighting. Normally, when you do a police station, we light the parking lot and we look at a fairly high lighting level. However, here we're in a residential neighborhood, so we try to minimize that. So we're at about an average of about two foot candles in the parking lot. We have two poles along the east side. Um, 16 foot, so relatively low. Um, some people like them lower. My preference is 16 foot because that way, when your salters go through it, they don't take your clothes out. Um, 
you know, they accidentally put bodies up that we don't want to having to replace the pole and everything better that way. What is what is the nearest residence to the other side? There are no residences on that side. Okay. So the church. Then we have building mounted fixtures at nine feet, um, filling in the lights along the pathway between the parking lot, and that's the light lighting the areas where they do inspection to the police cars. So you notice those light levels are a little bit higher, but still in the very you know high. I think their highest is around five foot candles there on the parking lot, so not terrible, but nice light levels. And those lights in the police parking lot don't typically get dim. Traditionally, we keep those up all the 24 hour operation so that it's on parking lot stay. Now, when you go around to the other side, we have again, we have wall lights, wall mounted lights on the building. We have path lights on the path. The path lights are bollards so about 42 inches high, and the building light mounted lights on that side, as well as building mounted lights on the existing basketball court. Um, those are all, you know, well, those are all dimmable fixtures. If so, if that's what the you municipality know, chooses to do, we can program the bollards to have motion detectors in them. We can have them at, you know, even to twenty percent of their light levels, as well, except when motion is detected, which is likely the right way to program. That so bollard is three and a half feet, four hundred and ninety-two lumens. Bollards are. Oh, am I looking at the wrong one? Bollards are four and a half feet, or forty-two inches tall, um, and are four hundred and ninety-two inches. Yeah. Yeah, right. With the exception of two of them, with three of them, which are circular distributions in the front of the building on the front wall. Right, those are slightly, slightly brighter. Those are slightly brighter. Did this um this might be a question for Drew. Um sir. Did this come this subject, the lighting mm -hmm. sort of department, this come up with the neighbors and the, the neighborhood and, and was this again and discussed like term plans with people who are directly in the west, you know, maybe across the street diagonally? I know you mentioned some of those residents. Right? Yes, sir. Um and specifically focus on the assistive lighting control, I believe it's called, or the lighting assistive control. And then we also had our community tree expert from CME who also specializes in lighting to go through and validate as well. Right. So, yeah, yeah, I think it's just an, an important thing to engage the public on something there. Yeah. yeah. And there's a solid fence along the way. There, there's, there's a board of board fence down that property line. Um, so that screens it even further. Um, fixtures are very directional down lights um, along the building. So, Spillage. If, if you were to remove the bollards, actually, if you look at the lighting, if you look at the lighting on the back of the building, which is the same fixture, um, you'll see that just past, you know, the one row of the numbers just past the lighting circle, that the uh, the one foot candle circle and the lights row were down to 0.2 foot candles, which would be about the fence line, even mm -hmm. not even not even the fence line, probably in the middle of the path. So the light levels fall off very fast from the fixtures in the building. Um, not spilling for police work. Do we require normally greater light though? No, no I say the, the light levels in the parking lot are on the low end of what we use for police parking lots. Um, is it changing much from what's existing? I mean, obviously, it's in the parking lot, but in terms of lighting levels, do you know how different it is? I honestly don't remember how much light is in the lot. I had looked at it, but I don't. There's, there's, there's one light. Yeah, it's not, it's, it's not. It's not. It's not well lit. It's not uniformly lit. Yeah. Um, so this will. The effort here was to make it more efficient. Yeah, it's more. It's more efficient. It. it I mean, it's relatively. I mean, it's. It's fairly uniform if you look at it. One of the things when with lighting is if it goes from dark to bright, light to dark, it becomes very hard to see detail. But keep it uniform, your eyes adjust, and that helps. Um, again, we have higher light levels again where, where the police have to do their inspections of the police cars. Also, we use wider parking spaces. Where the police are doing the inspection for the police and, and those are the lights that have to stay on all the well, time. The, the police the police lot the right. intent is to leave that on leave that on from <clears throat> dawn yeah, yeah. you really don't want to wait for the light to pop up to no no i understand <laughs> so that's lighting um next page coming back to our landscaping plan um We have a great deal of landscaping. Um, let's look at some landscaping. So, 
Along the front of the building, we have a mix of native, low evergreen, deciduous, and herbaceous perennials, um, providing seasonal and great stuff. Along the west side of the building, along the public path, there's a mix of mostly deciduous and evergreen trees. And I guess we tried to, apparently, the choices for the tall and narrow trees, those are not completely native, um, as from what I understand, but I understand that our landscape architect spoke to the borough's tree expert. Right. And they agree that those were very good choices and they're not invasive and they're appropriate choices. We also have evergreen trees, um, shrubs, and grasses there. And we have a fully planted um, rain garden along the um, easterly side of the property. We have again, we have a mixture of grasses and herbaceous perennials, evergreens, and deciduous shrubs, shrubs, and some shade trees. Um, shade trees across the front of the property, landscape along the rear, um, fairly well landscaped plan, um, deer resistant for the most part. Um, I'm not sure how hungry the deer are down here, but they're mm -hmm. by my house, so even if they're <laughs> find out if they like them, <laughs> even the things that they're not supposed to be, figure deer resistance is a good idea. A um, couple other features, you'll see that on the side, there's a gray, gray, uh, light brown shaded area on the right side of the parking lot that is the, jet, is the new generator. Um, the generator goes in a 65 decibel sound enclosure, which is uh, most, most of the people that you can get in a generator. Um, and just beyond that is the existing tower we talked about before. Um, yep, right there. Um, that remains the conduits that go in to go to the police station, um, taking the tower to the police station, and that's the transition for that. What else is there? Um, on the property line currently between uh Fisk Church mm -hmm. and the current police station, is there a significant buffer of trees currently that would have to be removed? There, there, there is not, not much. There's, there's some general vegetation yeah. that looked at yeah. it, nothing. Yeah, you're right. Well, there's okay. virtually nothing. Yeah, you're right. You're there's there. overgrown. Uh, there is some vegetation there, although it's kind of unkept. Um, the extent of the trees where that are being removed are on the west side. Um, by the current parking lot? By, 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 the, by the residents um, there. Is it going to be so there or they, is it going to be so not, it, not, it's not including the replanting, but are any, are any of the trees on the property line Considered specimen and yeah. work. Okay. They've all well, they've all been inspected and they've all been determined to be either in poor health or um, most of poor health. Okay, fair enough. The data that was per our CP community expert went out on site, which she walked through. Out of all the landscaping, there's one tree to see. Okay. Everything else is either diseased, in the city, or not work. No one's data. Yeah. That's an amendment. You know, I can ask this. What's that? Bonnie and Mark walked as well. Oh, I was going to ask if the Shade Tree Commission had a chance to take a look. So thank you very much. I appreciate that. Is, is there a reason you guys are keeping lawn on the uh, east side right there? Where it says existing building? It, Instead of finishing the landscape, but to have a path eventually to go through to the other parking lot? Or? Well, there's a path. There's a stone path if you look at the very bottom. Through, you circle the stone path there. Right there. So the stone path going there. Okay. Um, there was just different different in interest. We did the landscape the last the, the, the last fifty feet or, or the, the last ten feet there. I said no. Uh, there was a reason for the little piece of grass that you're gonna have to and maintain, as opposed to putting a yeah. few more trees and not have to worry about it. But there's okay. no reason we can't handle that. Um, they probably looked good when they were when they were playing. Growing it up a little bit different. Um, so, among the other things, with going back to your master plan, we are providing the pedestrian path and its access to the park for connectivity, um, which is one of the objectives in your master plan. So, it connects the pedestrians to the road, um, get better access to the building and the community center. Um, while you're on that feature to the front to the street, is there is there going to be a drop curb there? 
There is a not a drop curve there. There's a catch basin. Right there's there. a catch basin there. So that if someone were to come, they want to use that pedestrian path, they would not have access by way of wheelchair or anything like that. That is not, I mean, the, the sidewalk itself will be accessible um, from Maple. Mm -hmm. But but you couldn't drop someone off. But you could drop someone off, off there, and have them not not in a wheelchair. You could drop them off in the police station and right. the handicap parking space, and they could get there that way. You said, and, and there are drop areas for the all of the uh, handicapped accessible spots to the front. Yes, yeah, to the back. Correct. The extent that one is done in the, in the front, if you still want to get parking in the rear space for the handicap to the rear of the lot, um, how do you traverse that? If you're not going to the community center, you're still going to the police department. You just you have to convert. You obviously you'd have to go across. Okay. However, I mean, for the police department only requires the one parking space. Um, right. We had we had two there. We actually the police department. The, the, the parking lot itself requires two parking spaces. We have three because the proximity and use for the community center. Um, we also have a hatched area at the very back of the parking lot. There is a turnaround area if somebody pulls in for a dead end and it's back back out or pulls in. I'm assuming you're going to have some type of drop drop area or ground level to go into the community center. There is a press curve at the community center. Right. But once you get into that community center, there's no way to communicate them to the other sidewalks, either alongside the police department or to get back to the there's basketball courts or things like that. There's access to the basketball court up there. There's a sidewalk around the side of the community center. Mm -hmm. Around actually, there's, there's a sidewalk and walkways all the way around the whole community center. You can access the community center, the basketball court from the community center, as well as the rest of the park. They're all off to the west. Handicapped accessible. It's all at grade. It's all yeah. at grade. It's all at grade. Okay. Whether, whether it's handi handicap accessible implies a whole lot of things that I can't make a statement. Good, good, good fair, fair response. I'm just, I'm just trying to say once, once someone comes out of the handicap accessible spots at the back, they're going to be able to access into the community center. Yes, it's at grade. Use the walkways. They will not be, but they'll be limited to there. They would not be able to go to the front or the other walkways. Correct. Okay. They can access the police, they can access the parking lot. There is not a direct connection between the community center and the police station. Did Did you guys look into that little corner right there? I know we, we discussed the, it a little the, bit. The grades are such it's that. There, there, so we have two problems with that. Where this site is. Very great constraints. The community center must read to the basketball court and the tennis courts. Okay. Um, so the great community center grade is absolutely dictated by that. The police station grades, we have the Sally Port in the middle, which we haven't talked about. So we have Sally Ports and garages in the middle. Um, those are restricted and tied to the front door elevation. And the back is tied. The relationship is a door there. And so those and the front entrance are all constrained. The handicap and the, the elevation of the parking lot to the handicap is constrained. The first handicap parking space is constrained to the street. So the whole thing is really fixed to within, believe it or not, three inches of where it can go. <laughs> it, it took about a dozen iterations to get the grades and balance. So to connect this sidewalk on the community center to the sidewalk of the police station down here in the bottom corner, it could not be accessible. Not handicap accessible. It could be accessible via step for people to walk from the police station community center to be walking through the property that way. Correct. Yeah. However, there is a manhole that has to go there because of the logistics with the sewers. Yep. And mm -hmm. so at this point, it's not a desired connection. Yeah. Is, is it a major lift to put a drop curve? I mean, can you put a drop curve uh, just canted to the uh, west of where that grade is on the at the end of the path on the uh, on the north side of the, of the path? I believe the municipality is thinking about extending the sidewalk down to and I'm drawing a blank on the street. Locus. Locus. At which point there would be a drop curve there as well. Well, in the meantime, though, if you if if it's possible and it's not a major lift, to put a drop curve right there. I mean, again, you'd have to steer a bicycle around that that break. But um, I, you know, I, I you think about people coming into the house, you know, trying to get kids kids on bikes. 
they're going to come at that curve and they're going to ride around to the drop curb in the like the sidewalk in the parking lot, or they're going to have to lift the front wheels up or they're going to cut up on the you know driveway and lawn of the people right next door. Um, because kids on bikes are maniacs, we have them. Um, so besides, I guess I, 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 is that a big sort of geometric riddle to do that? You can say you have you have a catch basin. You have, there's a yeah, story. Right yes. There's yeah. a catch basin. There's a catch basin right on the property line. There's the drive. Is the driveway? Is the neighbor's driveway? Um. We can look at that. As well. We can look yeah. at it. I don't, I don't know. Their, I, I'm, I'm looking at it on paper right here. I can't tell you yes that. It was. I actually, I actually like the idea of an offset drop so that like the kids not like they're coming across the white line. Yeah, they're, they're not not racing. Racing. But yeah, they have to make a turn before you know cutting across the wall, so keep them from cutting all across the front of the property. So. I want to extend the screen now. Yeah, this can pass six, this six foot wide. So we're not, I still want any other spot. Accidentally, I think that's a driveway. No. <laughs> this, yeah, or we'll with, with, with the catch basin, that would be very unpleasant. So if you have a press curve, you'd have to do an offset the press curve. You'd probably have to move it like halfway between the pedestrian path and the front entrance of the building to make it work looking at it. I don't know that that serves the purpose. So I would guess if I was a kid, they're going to cut across the lawn. Then if you have it, I will. Probably, I would probably either come in the neighbor's driveway or come in the boys' driveway and go that way. I don't probably wouldn't come in the middle there. So then, so yeah, if we're just looking at that, because otherwise, then you're directing the sort of directing the kids into the police. To, I mean, the most they're potentially driving them to the police driveway yeah. up on the sidewalk and into the lawn. You want to put that scurries and the going into right. the parking lot, right? We can take a look. But I'll throw out, uh, looking at the original uh, station plans, this pathway is really developed, and I've got to compliment you guys on how you, how you set it in there and everything. It's really, it's a pretty cool part of the design. Thank you. Um, is there any anticipation that the sidewalks that are wrapping the community center will eventually connect to future phases of park development? That's a good question. Um, are they designed in such a way that it's something we're looking at? Obviously, we're going to be utilizing the tennis court mm -hmm. for staging area mm -hmm. and construction to store material and, and mobilize construction efforts. Mm -hmm. We also anticipate possible mm -hmm. disruption of that basketball court, but there's going to be some type of restoration effort because of the site and the, and the shape of the lot that's not to develop on. We're really only showing what's going on this plan as a phase one. Right. We're starting to discuss potential phase two on what that's going to be. And to your point, um, Jim, one of the points I had brought up was we need to look at the high traffic areas on foot and bike. Right. People will inevitably cut through that parking lot and walk through that green space. And from a maintenance standpoint, we have to look at I hate to use the word hardscape, but we need to look at something that's going to last mm -hmm. right. uh, for the amount of pedestrians that are going to be going through there or, or kids on bikes or parents pushing baby couches. Yeah, but just walking, exactly. Cutting through. So those are things that we're still Two tweaking. Three years, uh, and we've been having it's this a kind of yeah, meeting. That's about right. So. Right. And, and, and just to add a little bit more color, when we did the open houses, I'm going to say 90% of the feedback was on the basketball courts and the tennis courts. Yep. So when we were looking at this, knowing that phase two, what we talked would be, it'd be great if you had a connection here mm -hmm. and then here, right? Yeah. If we could just connect all this. Mm -hmm. So when we, knowing that the intent is to shift into phase two, and then we can further improve access um, without compromising the integrity and the functionality of the design as is, that's where it kind of landed. So just wanted to provide a little bit. Yeah. I forget the number of it was a lot of feedback, but, <laughs> yeah. but so it is designed in such a way that it's flexible. Yes, yes. Is next. Yes. Um the and drainage is also set up that way too. Yes. So <laughs> whatever happens if and when a phase two occurs, the infrastructure that goes in, the placement of the catch basin, all that intercepts that runoff. 
I understand what I imagine. So that it wouldn't need to be reasonably. We're not need to be working yeah. things out yeah. for the next phase. Yeah. Looking down um, the planner's letter, I think I hit everything except the question about the fence on the south side of the police station. There is an existing fence right on the edge of the parking lot that is a post and rail fence. The, we're showing a new post and rail fence that runs along the side of the walkway that wraps around the rear of the building and continues along the side of the basketball court, um, essentially the exact same place that it is, um, just to get, provide some separation from the park from the police activities. Is, does the fence wrap the basketball court? I think we. It goes across the basketball court. It's shown it's stopping at the southeast point of the police station. I think it stops at the southeast point okay. of the police station. And I guess the point of our question was just it sounds like you're going to have major things with the parking lot, anyways, but any concern about the basketballs hitting the community center? Because the hoops are right up against the so sidewalk. We really wanted to maximize the run out area mm -hmm. at the end of the court. We, we, right now, they're, they're playing basketball with the post and rail fence on the side. But you do want me to, if you look at the court, the court's a short court to begin with. The, 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 the uh, backboards are set right at the edge of the court. So the goal is, is that you can at least take two steps outside to um, run out. We actually, if you look at the setbacks on the police, on the uh, community center, they're off balance, it was actually pushed towards the east mm -hmm. just to give you an extra step. And give it one more, a little more separation. That's the lookout driveway. And and Greg, right? I'd be remiss. So we had five design iterations to the community center. The design three, this would be five, was was wider left to right, so it was actually closer. Mm -hmm. And after having discussions with the community and the residents, we actually shrunk it left to right and elongated it north and south. So just want to add that context as well. All, all utilities underground. All utilities are underground. Anything that special has to be done underground for the antenna or? It will have to run conduits across for the antenna. Same thing with the generator. Same thing with the generator. Okay. Okay. No gas, it's all electric. So, if you guys did the cost analysis, Ben, Drew, right? You guys, we did the cost analysis, and then between the state mandate, the length of the building, the government body decided to keep it all electric. All electric. Yes, sir. Comment number 10 in the planner's report. The subdivision was completed. Through, right. Uh, the, uh, the, the note on the drawing actually says subdivision line approximation, approximate. Um, just yeah, that's as to where it was, just for a landmark, not, not that you're seeking anything. We're not seeking anything. Right. We already did that. We did that. Correct. Um, well, so yeah. is, there, is there anything by way of number four? Uh, proposed for solid. Oh, yeah, we're, we're not there yet. We're yeah. not there yet. Okay. I think I hit everything else. Um, the only question I had, I, 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 I have concerned from what your comment was before that there's that in the circle in the front of the building, the proposed uh, rebuilding, uh, that's the flagpole. I assume that's what the circle of the squiggle line is. Yes. Uh, well, what is what is to the right? Well, to the I shouldn't say to the right, to the east. What, what are the stepping stones? Stepping stones. Gotcha. Just to provide a walking path to the. I see. Okay, so that right, makes. And you said as a memorial at five fifty memorial. Any other proposed signage? Um, oh, no. Okay. And, and, the only lighting, and the only lighting that there is is in ground lighting. Correct. Right. The plan all sliders. Yes. That's it. Uh, just the thought as we're discussing the different, um, I'm not sure what the term was, the the, the, the curb that would allow the plankers to come through on the west side of the property, would moving the flagpole and memorial to the other grassy area give more flexibility for that path and a better plank access so the kids don't have to go through the parking lot? It um, seems like the, the right hand side is, the east side, I should say, is kind of an open space. I don't know that move, I, and I wouldn't want to swing the path across the front of the building. Fair, I mean, fair enough. I was, mm -hmm. Since you have equal space on either side, if you're trying to make an adjustment to the 
walking path to accommodate like, bikers a little bit right. more efficiently. Yeah, I I have a catch basin, an existing catch basin that's there that connects the drainage system from the east to the west because the, everything goes out of Fisk from the inlet on the far side of Fisk. So the catch basin has to remain there. Yeah. Um, I don't want the catch basin in the park to the sidewalk. That would not be desirable. All right, well, I, just, you, you, I, just, you, I asked a question. You, 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 you would wind up with a very strange sweep across the front of the building that well, I don't think, think would be desirable. Well, I think somebody made the point that, you know, if the kids are coming in, you know, 100 miles an hour, maybe a, a force <laughs> slow down, an S curve of sorts. <laughs> kind of, right? Yeah. Um, not exactly a speed bump, but it would be, you know, not a straight line yeah. through. Um, okay. I don't know. Ten yards of sand. One thing I didn't hit are setbacks. Um, we have a front yard setback on the building of twenty two foot nine to the overhang side yard setback for the police station of sixteen foot six sixteen point six feet to the front canopy and six point four feet to the park. And the community center, we have a seven point a seven foot setback to the west, a five point eight foot setback to the east, and a six point four setback to the south. Just fill out your record. If the need proves, do you have room for uh, bike racks? There's a bike rack. We have bike racks proposed on the corner at the wiggle of the um, path coming in. That way, we're oh, the oh, I see. I'm sorry. You fear may not see them on earth, but you have to see them on mine. I need to get them. They're not on that. But it's over around the bend. We'll have a right track going now. I see them on that. So I have another, sorry, another question, uh, more of a functionality question rather than a design. And Chris, I'm thinking of you on this one. A baseball community perspective, mm -hmm. the bathroom situation on that, that entire park is always kind of needs a little bit of desire. Do you know? I'm sure you have discussed mm -hmm. the access to the bathrooms in the community center. 24-7. Um, 24-7 is yeah. the plan. They don't have separate entrance mm -hmm. um, for the public to access the bathrooms, but it is a good question. Great. And there's going to be specific technology used as an now for the locks. Yeah. So we're going to like her tip all of their hidden children so they can get the bathroom. <laughs> So if you see, if you look here, Dave, right? So you see the exterior door here. Yeah, yeah. I like using the color. Well, we understood it was just a different path. It's already been done for you guys. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so these doors will be, our intent is that it's going to be controlled electronically. So if you do dust to dawn or 20 to seven or wherever it is, that you can still access the site. And obviously there's cameras and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not inside yeah. the bathroom, but all around the area. <laughs> Yeah. Is that door on the on the east side kind of close to the property line? Right? No, we are five. There's only five foot between the on the east side between the building and the property line. So we have a five foot wide walk, mm -hmm. which pretty much puts it right on the property. And then there's the stone path to connect to the church. Mm -hmm. Wait, well, remind me what the the residence that's east of the community center. South of the Fisk, is there? I mean, is that a wooded area? Is there a house right up against it? Drew, can you bring back up the big church? Isn't it? No, it's kind of like what's south of the church front. Maybe you could be right, right but I just, I'm just thinking. Yeah, in church, there's three or four houses. Yeah, can you zoom in there. That's yeah. the tennis courts. Yes. So okay, so the 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 wall the wall there. I don't know what you call that. The wall, wall, wall. Okay, yeah. That's going to be where that bathroom entrance is. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Okay, all right, so it would be open space beyond the door there with uh, yes. the property. Okay, and there's I mean, there's existing vegetation along the property line to the house on Maple. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I didn't know if that property line on Maple was for the north. Um, but it, it, well, I just didn't want it to feel confined and kind of scary for a little kid to go back there if it was all you know dark and you know narrow. So, but it looks like it would be open. So. That is all I have in my questions. Yeah.
Here you said the, uh, I guess the house sign, uh, maybe we got the west side here. Oh, yeah. Um, that, that's the fence that's on the borough's property line? Two feet. Yes, there. There. Oh. And that, you said you got discussed with them and it's whatever. Chief went, Chief went, met with them, let them know what's going on, and they're more than happy to support them. Who, you know, our, our initial discussions is we're going to try and help them out. Right, right, right. of course. So, yep. Yes, I'm next. All right. My name is Eli Goldstein from the Goldstein Partnership Network. Rick, thank you for your very thorough um, presentation. And thank you for the committee appointing work for having us here tonight. <laughs> like Rick, I think this is my third time here with the last several years. So I'll be much briefer with Rick for the business. So thoroughly, I'd like to start with this image because, um, in some senses, it was the aerial view understanding a relative scale of the surrounding building that um, helped us determine that if we were going to make a one story police building, that we needed to break the mass up into points so it didn't look like one big. Single structure. So, as you can see there in the aerial view of the police building, we have it. It's basically a sport like a dog bone, two ends that run pretty much east west, and the middle part runs north south and next to them. And the scale of each piece of those three pieces is similar to the scale of the surrounding houses and church, as Luke has indicated right there. And as you'll see from the building elevations, this is even more evident when seen from eye level instead of aerial view. Uh, I think you will notice, but I want to emphasize that even though um, when you look at it like this, you, you think of this big open property, we did have to deal with the fact that the fields, the fields property is green acres. And so, um, although those close property lines to the south and west of the community center are only a few feet away, they're only they really only on paper because the borough owns it all. But we had to respect those because we cannot build on the Green Acres property unless we're building recreational facilities, neither of which is what we're proposing. So I just want to make sure you all understood that. One of the questions that uh, the Emmy Court asked number four was to talk about materials and colors. So I guess first let's go to the floor plans of the two buildings. <clears throat> or actually, let's, that's a good one to look This helps you understand <clears throat> the massing, the colors of the buildings that are not important at this point. We just wanted to distinguish the new buildings from the surrounding buildings for the purpose of this presentation. So you get a sense now more clearly, I think, of how the way we've broken up the police building helps you read as a smaller group of almost like a like a village instead of one larger structure because it's got a much bigger footprint than anything nearby. Next, please. That's good. Okay, so on the far right is the plan of the proposed police building. And I won't get into all the details, but in general, the north end is sort of like a front porch that you'll see in the elevations, facing Fisk, and then inside is a public lobby and a service window into the records bureau. That's good. And then, and this all has to do with the <clears throat> complicated inter interior connections we're required to have to meet all the standards for accreditation of the police department and for compliance with the Department of Corrections requirements. And so the Sally Port is just at the bottom of that image. And all of the detainee processing areas and the cell block all have to be connected to them. And so they are just above the Sally Port. If we zoom out a little bit, essentially the entire length sideways 
you know, of the building is offices and workspaces, starting at the, at the north, the records, and then the detective bureau, and the chief's office, and then a bunch of other dedicated offices for the staff. And as you continue down, we come to the uh, conference room. And then in the lower left corner is the break room. And along the bottom, the south edge of the building, is the uh, cluster of men's and women's locker and shower rooms. And as Rick mentioned before, the staff entrance is on the far right there. And so, whereas other will enter from the north over this, the staff will enter in the south end. They'll come in, and right there, they'll have the locker rooms to the right. As they come in, they'll be the training room, they have a prep room, armory. So it's all, all those internal role functions are all concentrated at the south end. You know, if I may, it's just important to note that we have um, a locker room for female police officers as well now, um, which we did not have before. <clears throat> and with respect to that, is you, if you notice, you'll see that the, the men's and women's locker rooms are essentially backed up to one another. And the reason for this is that we have found, we've done a lot of police work there over the last 15 years, and we expect the trend to continue. The ratio of men to women in the departments is changing. And so in order to be able to accommodate those changes in the future as economically as possible, we've provided a total of locker count, which is a little more than you have now, total staff. But we've also put this partition in a way that in the future, let's say you have four or more women in the force and four or less men, that partition can simply be moved over without having to rebuild anything, just move the partition. It doesn't affect anything. The plumbing doesn't affect the lighting. It doesn't affect anything else. So it just allows you to accommodate those changes in the future, which is one of the big changes that a lot of women have spent, have spent a fortune to accommodate. Then, if we zoom out a little more, uh, you can see how the two garages are going to be facing the room, the parking. And in between the two garages, are a series of storage rooms and utility rooms or large evidence and other miscellaneous storage for the police. So now if you scroll down the page, we can look at the uh, community center in detail. I should point out that, and this relates to the number four in the planning's letter, <clears throat> We try to use a common vocabulary, a textual vocabulary, and building materials for both buildings. So, and also to make them for the residential material. So, you'll see this more when we get to the elevations, but we're using uh, flatboard siding, we're using asphalt shingle roofing, using um, flat wood windows, residential scale windows. Will that be architectural asphalt? Uh, really think yes. so, like that they hire into the grades, yeah. of, okay. and then the windows. Um, you know, again, how do you check the grade of windows to make sure that they don't look like hell? Well, we say that we don't need too much help for that because the code requires extremely uh, strong, uh, high wind resistance because of the site, right? So, we're going with very high end windows, and uh, many of the Places around the site are going to have a tempered glass as well. For instance, facing out to the basketball court. Okay, so every basketball. Team. Plus, there'll be very high performance for those in terms of the world. Well, so, on that topic, yeah. if you don't mind my jumping, I noted that in the drawings there was uh, what looked like you know the lines that would indicate hardwood floors or wood simulated or wood floors, and one of the drawing in the drawing the package. I don't. Uh, we, don't, we don't have any wood floors, but we have some higher end vinyl tile for the place. And um, we're not using any expensive floor. Uh, we're using very functional material. I actually, I'm going to go not the other way in terms of cost, but in terms of finish. If we look around this, like fit and finish, we look around the rooms, we look around this place. Um, has there been any discussion or consideration given to the aesthetics of the flooring or the trim or any of the inter interior finishes? 
Oh, we talked a lot about Ford. Okay. And there's probably, I didn't read this thing, but there are, I think, eight or nine different types of Ford between the two buildings, mm -hmm. between the most durable brakes model in the same lot. You know, the resilient, very heavy resilient bar in the really center to be as flexible as possible for the different activities. Ceramic tile, vinyl tile, luxury on the tile to keep the spots like the lobby, the lobby is to go. We haven't really talked about interior trim because there's other, other than the community center, there's almost no public space whatsoever in the place to just a small amount. The rest of it is options to the public. So. We did discuss the pros and cons of carpet versus floor and just decided ultimately it was very difficult to keep the carpet clean. Yeah. Uh, and the public will have the opportunity to weigh in on the flooring as we get closer. Okay, cool. Uh, Thank you. The specific brand too, if you want to know is Rope PPE. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. So back to the question of um, material. We haven't yet discussed amongst the groups the colors we're going to use, but I can tell you that the, from my perspective, consistent with this whole approach to using similar materials, similar scale for both buildings, I could see making the color out of the outside of both buildings the same, or perhaps, for instance, just by way of example, let's say you had um, gray siding and white trim on the police building, maybe you'd have the reverse of the community center so that there's some resemblance without looking like this same function. But we haven't gotten to the details yet, yet at all. I guess at this point, it'd be helpful to go look at the community center in detail to help answer some prior questions about the bathroom. So we will notice that in the upper left and upper right corners, they're sort of almost like a desk. And the idea here is that if you come from the outside, you come directly into that vestibule and go into the bathrooms, even if the rest of the community center is locked off and closed. And similarly, that, if the outside doors are locked, you could access the bathrooms in conjunction with an activity within the community center. And this was very important to get to give these separate functions and give you the ability to operate from open, both open, both closed, or either one open, because we understand all the different activities that are taking place in the building and on the site. You also notice in the middle, down the middle of the building, vertically, you'll see a folding partition. This was fairly late development in the night, being able to subdivide the community center with the partition similar to the cross seen in convention centers, where Active on both sides at the same time. In the lower left corner, we have a kitchen area, which is um, going to be outfitted to serve um, activities within the building. And there's a service window that allows you to serve from the kitchen to the They're going to be two small mezzanines. One of each end over those mechanical rooms, which is where a lot of the air conditioning equipment will be located. Okay. All right, at this point, I think we should go to the <clears throat> So on the left, left side, we see the, uh, the upper left, the entrance view. From Fisk Street looking toward the entrance of the police department. There's a question before about signage, and you can see the opening in front of this portico. What a sign telling everyone what this building is. And if you scroll to the right, you'll see the entrance to the community center is very similar scale, similar materials, similar signage, <clears throat> slightly narrower. And the police building. Same window. The idea being that when you look at these two buildings in the street, you understand that they're all part of the same 
Okay, I'm going there, I mean, just below the entrance to the beauty center, you can see the south side, which is mostly land. There'll be a substantial overland. And this, this is coming out of the two community with a small patio just in front of the tennis courts. But if you zoom out this morning, go back to the left side page, you'll see the, the um, south end of the Police building, there's high windows there in the locker room. Oh, mm -hmm. If you scroll down, you'll see the, the, the east side and the west side of the police building, the east side of the two garage doors. The west side of the windows is all the opposite. Of what are the anticipated, what's the anticipated material for the railing along the uh, front elevation, along, along the front porch? Some sort of balustrade. We haven't actually picked the material yet, but it's been probably be something like. Can, can I put in that we should put in or make a recommendation towards the wood railing? Um, simply because that little piece of it could, you know, a metal railing, sort of metal vinyl looking thing up there could trash the whole front elevation it just as a historic house guy. It's, it looks beautiful and I, I think that could make a big difference. Is that how wide? What's the depth of the porch? I think it's about six or seven feet. Okay. Um, is it, Functional or is it decorative? Well, actually, if you look at it from here, you probably can't tell. That. The left half of the left and the right half a is a ring. Yep. The right half is level, and you could put a couple of chairs or something up there if you want. But it's not. It's be a nice a Mayberry touch to have a small rocking chair. <laughs> when we, so, background on this, when there were part of the open houses, we provided three different options. So we drove around town and looked at porticos, porches, wraparound porches, and kind of found common themes mm -hmm. and then presented that. The two houses that just went on across the street have a similar front porch mm -hmm. design. So again, going back to that residential friendliness, not only coming up with the suggestion, but then having the validation of the open houses that the residents were, were, were in agreement and, and echoed the, the residential aspects of the porch. And I'm all about a rocking chair. I think it should be named Joe McGovern. <laughs> I, I think the porch is great. And I think that's a big touch. And I, you know, all I would say is the red, just something that looks somewhat old in terms of the railing, not old, mm -hmm. worn out, but historical. Check, check. We can do it. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention before the entrance to the Police department, we've been requested to reuse the uh, globe lights that are outside. We haven't yet exactly figured out which place we're going to go there, but they're going to be probably anchoring where to go. So uh, I guess at this point, um, if there are any questions. So you, you said the west side of the community center, right? The west, yeah, west elevation. Those are going to be all the tempered windows because those were going to be the basketball basketball of that section. When Doug's play basketball, <laughs> <There's a driving laughs> but until phase two, then we know they're not. We have uh, two members of the public here, so I just want to make sure I acknowledge if anyone has some questions uh, from, from the public before we before we move on. Right, I just have a question. Do these have basements or are they not? They're both on the slide. Uh, to point out the, the question about the cutouts in the purple screen. What sorry, well, the neighbor's driveway is just a few feet from that point, so it's like that evening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think just that uh, I was thinking a little further about that. That really should be given heavy consideration because otherwise, if it's not convenient to use the path, they're just going to go through the parking lot. They're not going to go in the curb, you know, up the sidewalk in the parking lot and go around to the path. They're just going to run it straight back. Um, so, you know, within the limitations of what we've got there. And I was on the PATH committee the original time, so this is good. <laughs> uh, one question that we're going a little backwards and this might be more for you. I, I'm looking for a trash enclosure on the parking, the parking lot 
Well, I did on some of them. Okay. Yeah. So if you go back to the police plan, yeah. uh, well, actually, you can see like I see the trash room. Yeah. Just garbage hands. Just garbage hands, and we walk them out. Yep. What they have right now. No dumpster, no front loader. There's no dumpster right now. It's just I think it's four four or five rollouts. And the chief said that was good when we talked to him. The break, the break room in the police station. I mean, this is just a comment. Um, you guys using like a, a hard pipe water cooler? Sorry. Is there going to be like a hard piped water cooler? Well, the, the plumbing code requires us to provide either water coolers or um, bottle fillers yeah. in both buildings. And uh, we've had long discussions about the where for them, how many, and what elevation because the ADA has some problems. I mean, I, I saw them in the community center. I just didn't know if the break room was going to have them or bottle, like, where you're going to do them there. Bottle pillar in the break room. Bottle pillar and water bath and condoms to the community center, given that kids always don't have any water bottles. Right. So that, okay. Mayor Alpern, you, you wanted to speak. I think I said this to you once, Drew, and then I forgot about it. Is there any thoughts of square columns instead of round? One supposedly nicer than the other. The only reason I'm asking is my next door neighbor is square and I have brown and I like this stuff. <laughs> I could have sworn we were going with square. I look like a brown. Yeah, I agree. We'll, we'll double back, but I'm pretty sure we all agree with the square. And again, if, if, if the brown looked better, that's great. But it's the thought, I mean, it, it might change the look of the building. But... It's a little bit cheaper. <laughs> I think brown is more the style of the building and still the parking deck. You're keeping the old lights. I think brown is the kind of back in the third region. What, what is the two new houses we cross the street and every porch drove in a square around? You don't know what they're square. They're probably in a square. I think that's why when the conversation came up, we, we said we should shift to square. And when you look, even look at the new houses on River, square is. It is the trend on my thoughts right now. Yeah. Yep. Well, yes, square check. Trend is square now, and we should be pivoting. This is really good work. That's great. What was the cost reduction? So building cost, 1.2 million less. He's not going to give you the top numbers because they're going to listen to four point four to three point yeah, 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 it's all that. Yeah. Then uh if I recall from my notes from March 2021, there was a 2020 bond that funded this whole thing. Is that still going to fund the whole project or is there there's actually a whole new finance kind of no, there's there's uh don't quote me on the number. We have to confirm. I believe it's either four or five like bond ordinances. So now we have the cost estimate for PD in the community center. Now we are going back and engaging the fund finance council. I'm going to say cross the T's and dot the I's to make sure everything works. And we're going through Monmouth County, Monmouth mm -hmm. County pooling, which is 120 municipals coming together. To get the funding because it's it's a much more cost effective from the cost to do it and the rate. Mm -hmm. It's a second time done, third time they've done it. Once was COVID, and this might be the second or third time, mm -hmm. but all that's in progress as we speak. As it works, the county pools their projects and then yeah, they yeah. go to all the different towns and say, Hey, I think you can do upwards of 10 million. Again, don't quote me the exact number, Teresa's not here, but I think they say, Hey, you can get upwards of 10 million, pull it together. And it just gives you that much more of an advantageous from a rate. Um, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. It's a great question. Betsy, are you happy with the financials on this whole thing? I am. Okay. Uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be less than I think what we had originally proposed. Good. So. I know you're kind of the canary in the coal mine. So. <laughs> <laughs> if you're happy, McGovern's happy, if Betsy's happy, if Drew's happy, I think uh, we're in good shape here. Well, I think, sure. I think Drew. And Kristen have done a phenomenal job. I really do. Thank you. Because as someone said before, this we've been doing this for nine years. And Drew was, and Kristen, 
no, came on board. They were sworn in in January, and look what we've accomplished in three months. Amazing. Thank you. And uh, thank your family. I got I got a final question on um, parking. So you said existing was twenty eight. The demand was sixty five. That was existing. Correct. And then is that where you cut me off? Is that where I got cut off? Uh, it was somewhere there. Right? Right? So it's something. So. <laughs> What is the proposed parking going to be? So not with the church because the church is so space to the church. The community center room is just the hair smaller. Yep. Um, only requires 42 spaces compared to the 50 the other one. So the required parking for the new combination is 57 spaces. We have the same 28 in the parking lot. Okay. Um, so you're with plus the four on the street, those are real, no question, leaving out the church. And then and then church. and then you have the church. The church lot as it sits today has about 20 spaces available. Okay. And the hope is that we can reconfigure it and number six. Got part of the project on the church. And Jimmy, if I may, so we've had really productive conversations with Fish Chapel. Yep. They've agreed both to a short and long-term parking solution. Um, and that's underway. So we want to make sure that the planning board has the most up-to-date information. Um, the other piece, too, to keep in mind is that the current community center, it, the room itself, I believe, is 1,200, 250 square feet. So we actually reduced it um, not only to accommodate parking, but then aligning it with, you know, the groups that use the space. So, again, just back to that functionality. But I wanted to make sure you had that update. Do you have any historic perspective as to how, I mean, now, the one building is your combined use mm -hmm. how's, how's your parking doing now because uh, because i'm assuming the people are going to be using it it's going to be a yeah. similar group plus the same group that's going to be coming to the park so i mean what is your load now how are you accommodating it, it now it functions it seems well everything functions when it's there <laughs> it has to yep so the parking is is a, is a two-part perspective so think of i'm going to use google maps and not be very technical so you have the DVW here from this direction, right? Mm -hmm. And you have the police department. So with the community field and the tennis courts and all in the middle. So DVW is separate, right? So when we focus on the PD, we're really focused on a net gain for parking. So those came down to three variables. One, the parking lot itself, right? At the PD site, we talked about that. We're actually adding additional handicap. There's only one right now and adding two more. Two, the offsite improvements that are being taken place. So we're actually expanding rich. I don't know the right correct term, but why did they why did it realign this so the current line is uniform the main one? So that means there's a net gain of so you're gonna gain you're gonna gain what two spots there? Four or four, 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 four. Yeah, four spots. And then the this chapel is the third perspective, which adds you know, upwards 20, 30 extra spots, depending on the design, um, which is in progress. Um, so when you when you tackle again from the PD direction, it is a, I would qualify it as a significant improvement to alleviate the parking constraints, not only given the PD and the offset improvements, but the Fist Chapel uh, agreement that's going to be put into place. And you even have even yeah. have a dozen spaces mm -hmm. opposite mm -hmm. Allen Street, which is a short walk to the community center, mm -hmm. which is adjacent to that other basketball field right there. Right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you've got spaces there too, which we've added that path so you can see that connectivity as it goes past the playground. Mm -hmm. And there will be parallel along the baseball on third, on third Street along the field. Correct. I mean, it, it, I've been there a million times. People make use of I mean, it. You find parking. Where will they find the interim during the construction? One more time. In the church. In the church. I asked where they yeah. the interim. Yeah. You work that as your short term. Short term, exactly. It'll be part of the, the package, too. So with, with staging on the basketball. Mm -hmm. Church and then usually construction vehicles. No, staging. I'm sorry, tennis court. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Thank you. Tennis and then court. any contractor vehicles typically will be two jobs within the borough they have. At the oh, okay. so it's in a fast area. I mean, not fast forward here, but the plan uh, at some point, the plan in front of the BBW is to get spots in front of that where that grass area is. Is that we're just beginning the process? Parking that way, it would serve the park, or is that kind of out in the moment? 
That was the initial plan, but now the focus is more towards the renovation of DPW, which you guys will see hopefully. Hopefully in two months, two days. Right. Not calling a special meeting, <laughs> <laughs> discerning the priorities and the issues. Right. That was a big piece last time when, when, when we thank you. So I want to. Okay. So did you have something? Hey, let, let me make the following observation, which we've alluded to before um, during the presentation. Um, you know, the planning board's 2016 examination report, uh, as it pertained to this particular you know, development, said, and I quote, the police department space is outdated and suffers from a strange configuration of small rooms. There is inadequate storage. And the jail cells can only be reached by going outside. Booking areas are right next to the dispatch area, which is right on top of the conference area. The building should be remodeled to make it more efficient. Well, I don't think we remodel. <laughs> um, I leave it to you as to whether or not, and again, realize and the reason I, I reference that for the planning plan. That's our planning document. This is again one of those checkoff things. You recognize this during your last re examination report that this facility, and there's other, there are other facilities that we're focused primarily before on the police department. There are other, other aspects in your re examination report which did deal with community facilities, access to community facilities. Well, I leave it to you in terms of what our role is as a planner. That was our guidance. That was our map, if you will. I leave it to you as to whether or not we can check this one off on the 2016 re examination report once this is built in the manner that's been presented this evening. Let's make that observation. So, all right. At, at this point, yeah. after you've had a robust discussion, you can continue to have your discussion. What we would generally do is, and, and what I'm quoting from, quite frankly, is the March 23rd, uh, 2021 uh, report that I prepared uh, to uh, Mayor and Council concerning the new police building and the Capitol Review. It's been now uh, some four pages yeah. for things that we addressed at that point in time, areas of concern, pedestrian and bicycle traffic. Did you check that one on? Yeah. Landscaping, yes. Did you yeah. check that one on? Yep. Yeah. Trash slash generator enclosures. Did you check that one on? Yes. Sidewalk along the building uh, frontage. Um, there was going to be some discussion about relocating the building's frontage along Fifth Street. Sounds like that's an ongoing project. Uh, there was an issue of, as to whether or not there was additional signage and the and Paying attention to the front facade of this building. We're, we're down to circular or corner columns. Um, they ask you whether or not you check that one off. I, I do want to ask you a question. There, there was, uh, and again, I know we're trying to stay away from what was in the past. At one point in time, there's an iteration for a solar panel at the back of the lot. Is, is that still there? So both buildings are designed to support solar. And we're working with a energy consultant to determine if it makes sense to have solar installed now or later. Irrespective of that decision, the buildings are designed to support solar. Wait, doesn't wait, right? So, so those and uh, rooftop arrays. Uh, so I wouldn't call it this. Well, this I, so that you know, this this was a solar array that was a separate yeah. uh, attached facility. I'm assuming we're not doing that. Okay. But I, do want, I do want to call it out though. So you see this, this looks like a floor. This is actually a flat part of the roof. This is where the solar array would go. You cannot see this from the street level. Right. Um, the community center south wall, although not recommended to put solar on it per the energy consultant, um, it, it would support, that would just be on the roof and you would see that. Okay. So. Um, and the other thing to call out, since we're on the energy, um, the spots are going to be future EV. So there's an expectation that state guidelines are going to come down with what it means to have electric charging vehicles for police. Mm -hmm. So if you look here and for municipal, these four spots here 
We'll have all the infrastructure in place. And once the regulatory guidance comes out from the state on what it means to charge police vehicles, we just have the, the unit installed, but all the infrastructure in place. And then if you notice here, one of the handicap and two public spaces will also be electric vehicle charging as well. One of the other, and one of the, and the last uh, thing that we spent, against my recollection, considerable period of time tracking uh, during that presentation was that uh, because we were dealing with about one facility at that time, um, that because in the past it had been a multi-use facility, um, and we spent time on what was going to happen with the community aspect of that, and where this was going to be meeting rooms and laboratory facilities, we didn't even get to a kitchen. Yet. Um, so again, I ask, I, for your consideration, did we hit that checkoff? Someone's like, you can probably take this one out of your 2016 examination. Yeah. I leave that to your thoughts. Generally, what happens at this point in time, if there's nothing further, we don't need any more discussion, you would direct me to prepare a report uh, to Mayor and Council along the lines of what I did in the past to highlight certain things that we, uh, if we had any concerns, if there's any continued concerns, highlight those for me now and prepare that report to Mayor and Council, and they will be able to check off what they did there, uh, capital review in accordance with NJSA. Uh, 4055 Any other comments from the board? The only, the only thing, and I'm sorry, I keep asking questions, but it's the, the wall wall mm -hmm. from the from Doug's letter from 2021. Um, we did bring up the wall wall structure, and obviously, in this new design, that structure goes away. Is that, mm -hmm. uh, and I know that elsewhere in town, they're considering a wall wall um, mm -hmm. as projects. Is that, is that? The thinking then we'll just let Fairhaven Fields have the wall ball in this area. Not have one. The thinking is we we will this wall will go away, and but we will have a wall, and where that wall will be located, whether it's you know the community center or Fairhaven Fields, is TBD. Mm -hmm. But everyone involved in um, uh, wall ball or multi-purpose wall conversations is in the loop on this. Um, so more to come. Sort sure, of sure the opposite of my Reagan chart at Chanton. Build that wall, <laughs> and and they um, we have the estimate to design the wall already mm -hmm. and to move forward on that. But we didn't want to take away from the goal tonight with this barring next steps. And Rick, right here, was actually the one that would potentially design the multi-purpose wall. Okay, so just wanted to call that out. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments uh, from the public? Okay, we'll Yes. Let's tell you all this is done and built. That's what it is. I mean, that's a big project. I think it's going to be a new library. I think the absolute smartest thing to do at this point is put it upstairs in the community center. It's a better location, equidistant between the two schools. There's less traffic. And I just think. Economies of scale, if you, and it's an open area. You've already got the restrooms on the third floor. Right now, when the library has some kind of a program, the kids have to come down there or someplace else in the building for that program. This is the time to expand the library space and update it upstairs and make, make the community center or whatever type roof height you've got. The library, and you are, you also have windows, which you can see how right now the windows in the library are up. There is an upstairs here, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Well, you're, 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 you're upstairs, right? You just have your mezzanine, your attic space. What kind of ceiling might have you got? Right now, it's a big open space, and that second story inside of the We're going to have a a gable structure mm -hmm. at the high point, it's about 20 feet. Yeah, I guess. And it comes down to about 10 at the end. Exactly. And I think it's not really the scale that we put that in, nothing but a big open space. Does it require a kitchen, bathroom, or anything? And I think it's a lot of use of that extra bedroom. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Doug, um, so should we, we'll 
direct you to to prepare your memo. I propose a motion that uh, you direct the Federal Right of Mayor Council concerning our special meeting and review of capital project and this particular project with regard to the development of the police department and community center. I have a motion. Only motion. Second. You get that, Sandy? Yes. Ms. Bush? Yes. Ms. Patch? Yes. Mr. Hill? Yes. Mr. Kayola? Yes. Mr. Roth? Yes. Mr. Nika? Yes. Mr. Anderson? Yes. Technically open to the public on any topic because we do have to be back on the ground, not just the rock this thing. I just want to say thank you very much for the time and, and the attention and um, very much appreciate it. Thank you guys for us. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Uh, motion to adjourn. Do you have five minutes? Oh. No, there are another topic. Yeah. Uh, get out of here. Yeah. Also, uh, thank you, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.